Hello everyone. We are here to talk about Spark on Google Cloud. I'm Abhishek Kashyap and I lead product management for Dataproc at Google Cloud. We also have one of our customers, Mithun, with us. Thank you, Abhishek. My name is Mithun Bondugula. I lead the big data infrastructure team at Libram. I'm really excited to talk about our journey to GCP and Dataproc. Thank you, Mithun, for joining us. And thank you to the audience for watching. We have some exciting content in store for you. We'll start with a brief introduction of open source analytics on Google Cloud. We'll share what's new with serverless Spark, followed by what's new with security and governance. Finally, for the most exciting part of this presentation, Mithun will share LiveRamp's experience with Google Cloud, specifically with Databox Spark. As many of us realize, we are living in the golden age of open source, as it is now being pervasively used across enterprises, and the adoption is only accelerating. In fact, 99% of Fortune 500 companies use open source today, with 80% planning to further increase it in the next 12 months. As companies double down on their open source investments, they no longer see them as a separate corner of their data architecture. Instead, they are looking for ways to integrate open source analytics and processing into the core of their data platform. At Google Cloud, we have long focused on enabling customers to modernize their open source deployments with Cloud Data Block, our managed open source offering. Customers like Metro, Vodafone, and LiveRamp are using Cloud Data Proc to modernize their data analytics infrastructure to simplify their operations, lower support cost and infrastructure costs, and greatly improve the robustness of their data analytics ecosystem. As we have been in this journey over the past five years, we have learned a lot from helping customers migrate some of the largest open source deployments in the world to Google Cloud. One trend that stood out is the popularity of Spark. We have a dedicated focus on Spark at Google Cloud. Our commitment to making Spark a first-class citizen within GCP for all your workloads, be it ETL, data science, or data exploration. There are three key pillars to our Spark support. The foundation is an auto-scaling serverless Spark offering for all your workloads. We are bringing the same simplicity you're used to with some of our native cloud services to Spark, taking away the manual toil and complexity typically associated with Spark deployments. The second pillar is having Spark being pervasive with our market leading services like BigQuery, Vertex AI, Composer, and Dataplex. Now, data engineers, data scientists, and developers can all seamlessly use Spark in their tools of choice across all of their data. And last but not the least, we give you the flexibility in how you consume Spark. In addition to serverless, you can deploy Spark on Compute Engine or on Kubernetes. Now you have a full spectrum of offerings to fit your needs. A serverless Spark for ETL jobs is generally available. We have seen strong adoption from customers for the, their data processing pipelines. As an example, OpenX has migrated a lot of their ETL pipelines to serverless Spark and is seeing a reduction in cost due to 100% infrastructure utilization that they achieve in the serverless model as well as increased developer productivity as no one has to manage clusters anymore. We also have partners who are ready to work with you in implementing serverless Spark in your environment. Now let's look at what's new. We have implemented Spark natively in the BigQuery API, and I'll share the details shortly. 
For serverless Spark, we have also added custom executor shapes for your jobs that require high or low memory. You can now customize your auto scaling speed through Spark properties. And finally, for serverless Spark, you can now stream custom containers to all the workers to significantly lower the startup latency. On the security and governance side, you can get fine grained governance for files using Spark through Big Lake. You can automate policy management across your fleet of data proc clusters. And finally, you can federate BigQuery metadata in real time with the data proc managed Hive Meta Store uh, for your Spark applications to work seamlessly with BigQuery. So let's look at how we bring BigQuery and Spark together. Your data engineers and data scientists can now create external stored procedures in BigQuery by writing Spark code, and they can publish them for data analysts to use in their SQL analytics and dashboards. And what's more, you can actually use your BigQuery reservations for these Spark workloads and all BigQuery security policies that you set up will apply to Spark as well. With that, I would like to share a demo with you. This is the familiar BigQuery console. As you can see, there is an external Spark stored procedure in the left nav, and you can see the PySpark code here. You can change the name of the stored procedure and when you click run, it will create a new Spark stored procedure for you in BigQuery. The new one shows in the left nav, which you can then run using serverless Spark by just invoking that stored procedure. What more, you can create a new scheduled query within BigQuery to schedule it as a pipeline right from BigQuery as well. That was the demo. Let's now talk about interactive development through serverless Spark. Your data scientists can now go to their Jupyter notebooks and develop on demand. There is no need to create underutilized clusters and keep them running the whole time for development purposes. Serverless Spark through Jupyter notebooks is natively integrated with Vertex AI Workbench. So with Vertex AI Workbench, you can now develop with Spark together with other ML frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, SKLearn, and even BigQuery ML. And once you are ready to deploy these models, you can just create serverless Spark components through your Kubeflow-based AI pipelines. And again, without having to create any clusters, you can execute your MLOps pipelines on demand. To help you get started, we have a rich set of PySpark and Java open source templates, which you can use as executable code, and you can use them through notebooks as well. Moving on to the security features. The most exciting is the ability to use Spark with a variety of open data formats and apply row and column level actors to files in that format. And this is achieved through data proc integration with Big Lake. Furthermore, you can govern all your data from a single pane of class with Dataplex. We are also making it easy for you to create and apply policies for your fleet of clusters automatically. You can create policies for resource management, security standardization, or even for standardization of components you want within your data proc clusters at a project level, and you can then manage them across your organization. Last but not the least, you can now access BigQuery metadata from the data proc managed Hive Meta Store in real time. You can even do DDL and DML on BigQuery data directly from your Spark code. With that, I would like to invite Mithun to talk about LiveWell. Thank you again, Mithun, for partnering with us at Next22. To kick it off, can you please tell us about LiveWell? Thank you, Abhishek. 
I, you talked about some great technology features that enable faster and easy data processing, but on data side, collaboration is still pretty complex, right? When it comes to collaboration you, using the customer data, it is even more complex for organizations, right? So when we talk about customer data, there could be offline attributes like name, address, email, phone number, the change over time, don't have consistent representation, and online attributes like IP address and device ID have, have the same issue, right? So this is where LiveRAM can help. We replace those inconsistent attribute with safe, secure, easy, and, and, and consistent identifier that can be used to join data across the organizations. That was very contextual information, Nita. Thank you. Can you tell us more about your team and the data and technology landscape at LiveRAM? Sure. We are a global group, a group of engineers that apart from the other things, work on large and complex infrastructure uh, to process petabytes of data on a daily basis. We have one of the biggest identity graph in the industry. So unlike other uh, like analytics problems in the industry, which are mostly map and reduce, our problem is map and join, right? So, and we do it at a large scale. So we have built some custom tooling and uh, libraries for that. I'll talk a little bit more about it. Uh, we mostly use open source technologies and most of our products have multi-cloud support. Thank you, Mithun. Yeah, that is significant scale and complexity. You did migrate from on-premises Hadoop to cloud data proc about one and a half years ago. Can you share how your journey was? It was exciting. We had a lot of learnings on the way. So we started off uh, working very closely with GCP. We did several POCs and that drove our target architecture and overall approach. We made some very critical decisions early on that really set the stage for us. So one of the decision is, uh, instead of having a single monolithic cluster that is supported by the central team, we moved to uh, ephemeral clusters that are owned by individual teams that basically transferred the power back to the engineering teams. Uh, and it also reduced the blast radius for like poorly uh, configured or poorly implemented jobs. Uh, we also invested a lot of time and energy into building self-service service tooling that basically reduced the time to market for engineers and also made our workload consistent or, or processing pipelines consistent. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have the one of the biggest industries map join kind of use case. So we built a Java-based custom li library on top of Spark. It's called MapSite Join Library. Uh, one of our engineers will be writing a blog on it pretty soon, uh, but that really helped uh, uh, make our pipelines efficient. That's great. Thank you, Mithun. Can you share what has worked well and what are some of the benefits that you have realized? Yeah, so we we met with GCP team. We meet with them. Uh, they, they have been really great support, amazing partner uh, through this whole journey and even now, right? So we meet with them on a weekly basis. Uh, we work very closely with them on a quarterly basis in defining each other's ro roadmap or impl influencing each other's roadmap, I would say. So one example is driver pool uh, that's, uh, that we were able to influence data prox roadmap to in include, that, uh, include that and implement that, uh, right? So apart from that, cost was a biggest, uh, uh, biggest requirement for us. So we implemented tagging, reporting, alerting that helped us attribute the cost to the lowest le asset, uh, asset level, asset grain. So that really helped. Um, we, as I mentioned, we did implement a lot of tooling. Terraform uh, for cluster creation was a was, was a major uplift for the engineers. Basically, you could use that Terraform to create clusters, and that would uh, that that would have all the plumbing necessary to work within the LiveRAM ecosystem, right? And after the migration, once we reached a reliable uh, configuration, right? We spent a lot of time on cost tuning, right? We use uh, all the leverages like on-demand versus PBM, node type, 
disk type, disk space, decommissioning time, scale up time. We used all these parameters to come arrive at a very uh, optimal configuration for our workloads that is both reliable and cost efficient. In some cases, we have saved more than 30% on cost and improved the efficiency by 10x. That is great to hear, Mithun. Uh, thank you for sharing these. Next, we would love to know where you are headed. Sure, yeah, we are working, now we are working very closely with NVIDIA and GCP. Uh, we are on cutting edge uh, path over here. We are looking to run some of our complex workloads on GPU using NVIDIA's Rapids Accelerator Library. Uh, we have made, uh, we have been doing that POC for a quarter now. Uh, we have made tremendous uh, contributions to the, to the uh, Rapids library, and we are hoping to go live uh, with one of our workload on that pretty soon. Uh, and as I mentioned, we will be migrating to driver pool, the feature uh, uh, that, that we worked uh, with Dataproc on. Uh, and we are also, we have like uh, workloads that are like very small to very large. So for some of the small workloads that complete within five minutes, we are looking to move them to serverless data proc um, pretty soon. Thank you for sharing these method. As one last question, would you like to share any lessons from your migration to cloud? Yeah, there, there have been a lot. Uh, it, it, it has been a good journey. So one, one thing, the primary thing I would say is benchmark, benchmark, benchmark. So as they say, you can't improve what you can't measure. So having a good understanding of your workload before migration is very important. So generate that benchmark. Um, and also with any migration project, especially the complex, with all the complexities, it is important to focus on one thing. So what we did was we said reliability was our focus with same cost. And then we, we basically worked on the cost post migration. So, and another cool thing that you get with uh, a good relationship with GCP is preview preview of all the new features that are coming along, right? So even though there is no guarantee that all the features will be same at GA, it is important that you engage early on and like influence the features to make sure that uh, they meet your need, especially the features that you're uh, you, you, that that you are very interested in, right? So another thing on the cost. Custom uh, committed uses discounts, they, they save money, but spot VMs save even, even more money. And one, one thing to note is like spot VMs don't count for committed use discounts that you have purchased. So it is very important to understand your workload and buy the committed use discounts only to the level that you can, you would spend, right? So you would, the way would you would go understand your whole uh, workload and then uh, understand how much of that will be your spot instances and how much of that leftover would you want to buy committed use discounts. Wow, those were some great insights, Mithun. Thank you for joining us and thanks to the audience for joining us. Have a great rest of next 22.